we'll have a quick opening statement from Malcolm Turner, and then we'll open up the questions. When you ask questions, if you can state your name and affiliation. We'll proceed. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm excited to be underway. This is day three here, and had a uh, fun-filled day one on campus, and uh, was able to hop around the various programs and pop into practice and visit with our staff. And day one, you know, as I said to many folks, was was a day that I've been waiting for for, for some time, and so I was anxious to get started. And um, and just the relocation to Nashville has just been terrific. My wife Jessica and I are thrilled to be in Nashville, thrilled to be part of the Commodore community, and uh, so excited to to get started. And uh, so I appreciate all of you being here and, and look forward to taking your questions, but uh, excited to be here, really looking forward to getting going here. Malcolm, uh, Adam Sparks, Tennessee. You're used to watching basketball games without a rooting interest. You're looking at the product of the team. What do you think today will be like having a team to root for? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I was talking with my wife Jessica you know, about that. and. Uh, you know, you're absolutely right. That that that's a difference, and so I've been looking forward to rooting for a team for some time, and so uh, that's another item we can add in the plus column starting the day, which is which is great. So uh, we think that's going to be a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to that experience. Malcolm, I'm sure you had about a month and a half between the time you were hired and the time you started work. I'm sure you didn't just take the time off and not think about it. What were the things that you thought about? What things you talked about in that space in between? Yeah, first I had a lot of obligations that I was wrapping up on the NBA side, so I, I was not off on the beach uh, by, by any stretch. Um, you know, the, the, the nature of my role at the NBA is one that, you know, we were in season and there are not a lot of natural hard stops and, you know, given some current obligations that we had within that business. And so, um, you know, wanted to fulfill some obligations for, for our commissioner and our owners and our teams and partners there through roughly mid-January, and so there was a bit of, you know, that transition, relocating to Nashville, starting to have some early conversations, um, you know, both within the department and uh, trying to start to build and create relationships with our coaches and uh, the leadership here at Vanderbilt University, and certainly, you know, I was overwhelmed by the feedback and response and, you know, had a lot of folks reach out and, and uh, you know, many of whom I was able to connect with and, and others, you know, are, are certainly getting those calendarized uh, as well. And so uh, it's been a, a fast and furious, you know, month and a half, two months or so for sure in terms of wrapping up some of my obligations on the NBA, you know, getting ready for the relocation with, from New York City to, to here to Nashville and, and now in earnest uh, the ramp, ramp up and, and official transition uh, to Vanderbilt. So uh, that, that transition certainly moved in a lot of different directions uh, for sure. All the more reason, so anxious for day one uh, on Friday to get started uh, with a full and dedicated focus on uh, Vanderbilt University and, and the Commonwealth family. Um, what's uh, Chris Harris' new sport here at NBC National? What, uh, what's your process for kind of implementing some of your ideas that you may have for him? Yeah, I've, I've said this before, you know, I'm uh, someone who I've never gone in any new situation with all the answers to the test and, you know, I like to I'm gonna do a bit of a listening tour and try to talk to as many people as I can, you know, within the athletic department and with our student athletes and our coaches and our fan base and partners and well beyond. Certainly, you know, I, I come to this role with, with some initial ideas that I will test in those conversations and good ideas can come from a lot of places and so I'm looking forward to uh, engaging in that conversation. I think <clears throat> showing up and being present and engaging uh, is particularly important at this early stage, uh, you know, for me in terms of my connection to Vanderbilt and the Commodore family and this fan base and our, our group of student athletes and coaches and um, that's a connection point that's very important, you know, for me as we look to craft a plan going forward. But, you know, the culmination of kind of that listening tour, if you will, will be working with Chancellor Zeppos on a strategic plan as it relates to Vanderbilt Athletics, and that will include a full review of our student athlete experience and the resources and investments that we need to add and wrap around that experience, and that will include uh, a review of our facilities and ultimately. You know, Vanderbilt Athletics will be featured as part of the upcoming capital campaign as well, uh, of which, uh, you know, our, our student athlete experience, including our facilities, will benefit from. George, you're from Tennessee, and uh, what have you learned, or what 
what stands out about what you learned in some of the conversations first day the job? Uh, I just think there's tremendous opportunity. I certainly felt that going in and speaking, you know, with, with sidewalk fans and you know members of the team and um, you know, and many others. It's just validating that uh, I think there's been a, a high level of achievement and great accomplishments to date. But uh, I'd like to say that you know let, let's find out what our ceiling is. And, and I think that you know I've talked about this before in you know some of the earlier media that I'm very proud of the Vanderbilt way, and I think there's great opportunity there and. Um, I think there are so many within the Commodore family uh, who also feel like there's great opportunity and that's one of the reasons why I you know, took this particular uh, job. Uh, I've admired this university from afar uh, for a very long time and the Vanderbilt way is something, you know, is a very compelling proposition to me in terms of, you know, being able to tell a student athlete you can have the opportunity to compete at the highest level but also have an opportunity to get an education that's second to none. And, you know, that was a very compelling proposition for me, but I think overall, uh, with all the achievement and accomplishments that we've had to date, um, I think there's great upside. I think the foundation is very strong, but uh, it's going to take some work. I didn't take this job because it's easy, and there's a lot of uh, open questions out there that I think need answers. And so I've always been one to enjoy blank sheet of paper opportunities and growth opportunities, and that's certainly what I feel like we have here. I have a you talk about opportunity, you look down at your mic flag and it says SEC, just how big an opportunity is it to be a part of the SEC, not just financially, but physically, the ESPN uh, tag and everything like that. It's how exciting is that opportunity? It's, it, it's, it's exciting and it's part of, you know, what makes this such a compelling opportunity. Um, you know, the SEC in its own right, I think it speaks for itself, a leadership conference for sure. and. Uh, and there's some practical realities, you know, that come with that, you know, and, and, and I know one of the big open questions is football and there's some, um, you know, part of being in this conference, there's some competitive practical realities and table stakes, if you will, for playing the SEC and the institution of football in the South and well beyond. And, uh, but there's no doubt about it, the, the notion of being associated and part of such a fine university and leadership brand in its own right, Vanderbilt University paired with the leadership conference in the SEC once again made this a very compelling opportunity uh, for me. Yes, on the ledger. So you've got a strong academic background and a strong business, sports business background. Talk a little bit about how those two merge and did you always want to come back to the collegiate level and be an athletics director? Yeah, the academic uh, piece of it has been, you know, always been very important uh, to me and that goes back um, you know, in many respects to my mother. Uh, she desegregated the University of South Carolina, and so this is someone who demonstrated great courage and literally had to fight for education, and so it was such a strong model of leadership uh, and courage for me and in, in, in instilling in me the value of an education and the opportunity that an education creates for someone, um, you know, to, to, like I said, literally have to fight for education, and so, the academic piece and the role of education was always important to me. Um, and so uh, when I was taking a look at this opportunity, the academic reputation here at Vanderbilt University, that was consideration number one, uh, without question. And so that's always been something that's been, you know, very important uh, for me to begin with. It was an important piece of the consideration set that brought me here. Um, I have been in this sports business for, and I've been fortunate to have worked uh, really throughout all corners of this business from uh, facilities to media marketing partners and certainly my prior role with the NBA, uh, with players officiating, you know, our team ownership construct and, and all of that. And so, uh, but I really grew up in the consulting business. And so I grew up, you know, going in and out of brands across different categories, properties across different sports, trying to solve C-suite problems. Uh, great opportunities. Um, that's really where I grew up in this business uh, ultimately and so I think that will serve me well in terms of bringing a bit of an agency mindset to this role um, as well in terms of identifying our challenges but also trying to uh, identify solutions and uh, how we can create opportunities to move us forward. How long, in general terms, how long do you think uh, a coach should get to do more or so? What's the clock on Know, coaching tenure when you need to see 
Yeah, I think it's all situational. I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to give a flat timeline. Uh, certainly there's history, you know, and, and I think context matters, um, you know, in terms of a coach coming into a very strong situation with a strong base of talent and the resources that they need. That's very different than the alternative. And so all the more reason, I think it's very difficult to, to give kind of a generic time frame. Um, you know, but, but I think context matters, I think situation matters, and so uh, I don't think there's one formula or one template, if you if you will, that would apply uh, for each situation. Bob and Chris Lee from Dana Sports. Obviously with your basketball background and this school having sent guys to the NBA, is there a particular place where you think you can really be of use to advising kids to go here, help the coaching staff? Is there really targeting a lot of high four and five star kids? Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, I, I have that background, um, you know, for sure, and, and if and where that's helpful and useful, by all means, I will absolutely, um, you know, be applying that. Uh, the NBA was certainly a wonderful experience for me and uh, really very interested throughout the NBA overall, but the NBA G League and the WNBA as well, and, uh, you know, our coaches and GMs and ownership there, and so, if and where there are opportunities where um, you know I can bring those relationships to bear, by all means I will. But um, you know I've worked across a number of other properties for uh, as well. For example, the golf business. You know I, I uh, you know when I moved over to the NBA, represented almost a quarter of the tour's title sponsors, and our athlete representation side represented some of the top personalities in golf. And so there are a lot of spaces that. Um, that you know, where it can be beneficial for our program and our coaches and ultimately our student athletes. I'm available uh, and accessible and then certainly we'll look forward to putting that expertise and perspective uh, to bear on their behalf. You mentioned football earlier, just being in the SEC and the influence. In, in your opinion, should football drive the bus? Uh, would this, would this important? I think it's important. I'm not going to say it's the only it's the only bus, but it is a key driver. There's no doubt about it. That's in part, you know, my, my comment earlier. And so I think, you know, we very clearly have an open question on football. Um, you know, that that was an open question well before I arrived. And, and having said that, um, you know, I think the Commodore fans, I think that's a question that needs to be acknowledged and uh, will be one of the first orders of business that I have in terms of understanding any and all existing plans against football. Uh, but then again, using that listening tour to perhaps test some ideas and bring some ideas of my own uh, to the table. But there's no doubt about it. That's one of the practical realities of uh, being at a leadership conference of, of the SEC, uh, but we have other wonderful programs uh, as well, and so this will not be a singular focus on football at the expense of our other programs. However, yeah, having said that, like I said, I recognize the importance of football, um, and so I, I will, that's one of the early orders of business, that program in particular, uh, but again, I want to understand where our opportunities across the board for all of our programs. I know you're only on day three, but you kind of mentioned do you have a list of priorities now, something you want to tackle first and foremost? Uh, I would say I want to obviously, like I said, understand where we are from a facility standpoint, but even before we get to the facilities, I want to understand, you know, those other facilities and resources that frankly our student athletes touch on a more daily basis, routine basis, uh, before game day in the football stadium. I think all of that is part of the mix, if you will. Um, I think it would be, um, you know, uh, incomplete to simply focus on the football stadium without taking a look at the progression before the stadium and again, those other assets and resources, um, you know, that our student athletes in the football program, but again, across our other programs uh, need and uh, in, in the interest of, you know, what do they need to facilitate and accelerate their achievement uh, on the field and for our student athletes and for our coaches and of course their off-course development, off-field development as well. How much will you gauge their opinion the student athletes? On Excuse that? me? How much will you gauge their opinion on a specific topic? On the Very much. I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's important. Um, I think, you know, they, they, they know it firsthand and I think all will have unique uh, points of view, uh, but I think frankly you start with the student athlete, uh, their perspective and, and grow out from there. Talk to David Williams, and if so, what advice did he give you? What questions did you ask him? Um, you know, we, we've had a uh, routine conversation over the past several weeks, and a lot of that conversation, frankly, at this point, has been in the category of, you know, getting me up to speed on some history. He certainly has a lot of institutional knowledge and 
uh, over the next couple weeks, we, we do have a set schedule on very specific topics that, um, you know, where I just need his history and perspective and just a level set in terms of where we are, uh, if you will. And, um, you know, he certainly, you know, he, he has been a good partner and a great partner to date and certainly welcoming of a continued dialogue and discussion. And so I look forward to taking advantage of that going forward. But to date, it's really been uh, more in the category of uh, different areas of the business, um, you know, making sure I have a foundational understanding of where we are. But uh, he's always available. Um, he's been very welcoming, a really strong partner uh, already, and someone that I'll look forward to relying on. Because again, he's got a lot of institutional knowledge that can be helpful, and, and, uh, and I'm appreciative about that and look forward to taking advantage of that work. From a marketing perspective, what kind of opportunity do you see here? I think there's tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, I, I think there's great opportunity. There's some challenges too. Marketing, you know, college athletics, and what's increasingly a professional sports town. Um, I want to take a look at, you know, uh, the way the broader Vanderbilt University and the student uh, body, you know, connects to Vanderbilt athletics and game attendance. But I think it's a, a great opportunity, and, and that certainly will be one of the areas that uh, I for sure will be taking a look at. Uh, from a marketing standpoint, from a game presentation, game execution, fan experience uh, standpoint, I think all of those are, are critical components, um, you know, in terms of how do we elevate the performance of Vanderbilt athletics overall. Uh, I think the marketing and the game day experience and the fan experience are just critical um, components for, for, for that process. Don Yates, RandyMania.com. Don Yates, RandyMania.com. Uh, how can folks in the Vander Vanderbilt community make suggestions to you? Is there any web page or something they can submit questions and, and uh, ideas? Yes, we will be uh, setting up a vehicle to do just that, so I would ask you to stay tuned, but um, that will be an important uh, area for me to, you know, certainly I'm going to be proactively engaging, but again, ideas come from a lot of different places, but stay tuned. We will have a vehicle uh, for the community to follow their ideas uh, into me and, and our department as well. Did you have any connections or contacts here before you took the job, and what was your perspective on Vanderbilt and its athletics, maybe before you at all got involved with this? Yeah, I had no specific uh, connection. You know, in, in a lot of ways, um, I would tell you, um, you know, to some degree, I'm surprised that we're having a conversation. And all I mean by that is, Vanderbilt is a place I have long admired from afar. And so um, I was on a wonderful run at the NBA and enjoyed that business. But um, I always said if, if I were to get into this space, it had to be a very specific, unique topic, type of opportunity. And it just so happens that. Uh, Vanderbilt was a place that lined up on a lot of areas that were just important to me, but my list was so short. I was not simply looking to be an AD somewhere. Uh, this was a very specific opportunity that was compelling, uh, you know, to me. And so, um, you know, so there is no formal connection other than a place that I've long admired from afar, uh, reputationally, and and. You know, it's student athlete model, uh, as I said earlier, a leadership brand in its own right, and participating in a leadership conference. And um, so there, there were very specific things about this opportunity at Vanderbilt University that were compelling for me. And you've been on campus before you got the job, and you've never attended a basketball game here? Uh, I have not. Today will be my today will be my first, and uh, and actually, you know, just in, as far as the city of Nashville, I'd always heard wonderful things about Nashville, and you know, was was here last summer, my wife and I, for the first mm -hmm. time for uh, some social functions, and really, you know, had always heard so many wonderful things about the city of Nashville, and just really fell in love with it. And who knew at the time, fast forward, that we would be relocating, but uh, again, you know, Vanderbilt and, and um, you know, friends of mine who, who, who have attended here and, you know, generally associated with it, uh, certainly always spoke highly of it, but I had already admired this place from afar for a very long time, and uh, I just think the opportunity against the backdrop of the growth story that's unfolding with the city of Nashville, I think just, just makes for a wonderful opportunity. You were at the baseball bank last night. What what was your impression of being there and your takeaways from seeing all that? I thought it was terrific. I thought Tim Corbin and just, you know, the, the connectivity that he has with his team and, and, and their connection to him and 
uh, and to Maggie uh, as well, I mean, it's, it's, it's immediately evident. I thought it was very powerful, and, uh, you know, we had a wonderful time. Uh, Coach Corbin does a wonderful job with, with the event, and um, it, was, it was inspiring. And, you know, you go through the videos and the recaps and kind of the, the you know, his, his talk on, on each of the players, and it was a wonderful experience. And as I told Tim, uh, I was just proud and, and honored um, you know, to have the baseball banquet as part of my opening weekend, if you will. Uh, it was an exciting way to start this, this role to, to be able to attend that event. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.